It's uh, certainly a gift to have you all here today. I want to say welcome to any guests or visitors that we might have. If we have anybody uh, joining us from another parish or maybe another church, or if you've uh, not been to church in a while, you're coming back today, welcome back. Good to have you as we celebrate uh, answered prayers today. Amen? Uh, it's uh, ironic to be actually looking outside and see the sun shining today on this Sunday morning when just on Friday morning we were, uh, we were perhaps in, in, in hurricane preparedness mode, getting ready for uh, Tropical Storm Karen as she was inching ever closer to the coast. Many of us, uh, of course, began to pray about uh, maybe God blessing us and that not coming our way. And not only did Karen not come our way, but uh, just kind of, kind of disintegrated right there in the middle of the Gulf. So whether that was God or whether that was just dry air or everything in between, just want to say thanks to God that we don't have a hurricane today. Amen? Amen. It's been a weekend of answered prayers. <laughs> just going to say, LSU scored 50-something points yesterday. <laughs> and their defense held Mississippi State to three points in the second half. The Saints are 4-0. Alex Godet's at Mass today. Lots to be thankful for this morning. Answered prayers. First thing I saw when I woke up yesterday morning was the news. Now, I forgot that I fell asleep Friday night watching CNN, trying to get a little Tropical Storm update there. And so I turned on the TV yesterday morning to get a tropical storm update. And the first thing that was on the news was a story about military chaplains, priests in the military, who because of the partial shutdown of our government right now, uh, at least yesterday morning, there was the fear that if any of the military chaplains, the Catholic chaplains in the military celebrated mass, they could be arrested because the government uh, is in partial shutdown and where they fall is uh, non-essential employees, not supposed to work, that kind of thing. And, and it, was, it just it really upset me. Now, um, I do believe that there's been resolution with that since then. That, that same threat's not there now. But I got to say that when it hit me yesterday morning, man, I had all kinds of emotions about the fact that that would even be on the news, that we have reached a point in our nation where a Catholic priest might be arrested for saying mass for people. Now, I understand the whole drama going on between the Senate and the House and the Affordable Care Act and why they're really fighting about that, and that's not really the issue. The issue for me was the, the concept of a brother priest going to jail because he was saying mass. Like, that just really, really kind of stirred in my heart. And of course, there's been resolution with that. At, 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 at this time, today, at this moment, I don't believe that 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 fear has been lifted, and so God has even answered that prayer, and I am grateful for that. So lots of prayers being answered today. Um, the fact that my brother priest in the military can, can say mass, tropical storm, now tropical depression, Karen is not threatening us. LSU found a defense in the second half and an offense all season. All kinds of things to be grateful for that God has answered our prayers. Amen? But what about when he doesn't? What about when you pray and you ask God for something and he doesn't answer your prayer? Or he doesn't do it on your time? He doesn't do how you wanted it to be done or even maybe even doesn't even respond? I mean, it's not the first hurricane that we asked to, to just go away. And there have been lots of hurricanes that have hit South Louisiana. A lot of times that we prayed for protection and it hasn't happened. A lot, lot of times that we have asked God to bless our families, people getting sick and you, you beg God to do something and maybe God doesn't do what you want, when you want it, how you want it. Maybe you ask God for something personal in your own life, in your marriage maybe with your kids or with the economy, with the government, whatever it is. I think we've all been in places where we've asked God to bless us, and he's done it. And we've all been in places where we've asked God to bless us, and it hasn't happened. Maybe a lot of times in, in, in life, God asks us to wait. 
That's what I heard yesterday. I, was, I, I got up and I came here into the church for my holy hour and I sat right there in the first pew where I usually sit when I pray. And I looked at Jesus and I just, I had to be honest, I got to be honest with you, I just, I shared my heart with him and I was just mad that the concept that our, our brother priest would go to jail and, 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 and what I heard from God was, wait. Just, just wait, Mark. I'll, I'll do something. Just need you to wait. And in fact, there's been a lot of times in my life where I've, I have begged God to do something and I've just heard God say, wait. Now, I don't like waiting. I want what I want, when I want it, and how I want it. I don't like to wait. For example... Who in their right mind doesn't snack on fried shrimp while you're frying them? <laughs> Nobody in the church starts out with the same amount of shrimp that you started to fry that actually hit the table when it's time for dinner, huh? Everybody snacks on fried shrimp as, you, as you're frying them, right? You got to test to make sure they're all right, right? French fries. If eight potatoes we're in the grease, only six make it to the table. Amen? <laughs> Much less drive through. Some people are eating their french fries before they get their change back when they go through the drive through, right? None of us like to wait. When I was a kid, I hated to wait, especially when it came to Friday nights when we had fried shrimp and french fries because we're in South Louisiana and we can't eat meat, right? That big sacrifice right there. When I was a kid, I would, be, I would hover at my dad's feet as he was frying shrimp, ready like a skilled animal to pounce on that shrimp as soon as it came out. And my dad would sit there, and he would fry the shrimp, and he'd put it on the paper towel, and he would give me that look like if you even think about touching this. <laughs> Same thing with french fries. He'd take the french fries out, he'd put them on there, and he would tell me to wait. Now, when you tell a young kid, a little kid, to wait, you can't eat the fried shrimp or the french fries, what does that kid hear? The world is coming to an end. <laughs> All of your happiness has been taken away from you. No, kids hate that. Kids hate to wait. Why? We, because when I was waiting for the fried shrimp and I was waiting to eat, it took a whole 10 minutes. And it just seemed like I was waiting there and nothing was happening and it was just torture in the wait. In fact, I have a scar right here on my hand. That, that came from the day that I realized you can't actually take the french fry out of the grease when it's frying. <laughs> and you know, I never did that again, ever, in my whole life. I hate to wait because in the waiting, it just seems like nothing is happening. Well, that's the same thing in our prayer. When you're going through a patch in life and you want God to do something in your life and God says, wait, or he doesn't answer your prayer at all, apparently, or does it something different, none of us like to wait because we're afraid that God's not doing anything and it's, we just we get frustrated. The first reading today is from the prophet Habakkuk. Now, I'm not quite sure if you've ever spent a long, cozy weekend with Habakkuk, but I never did. First time I ever heard of Habakkuk was at a season in my life where I was really in, I needed God. And God led me to Habakkuk, and, and that's where I want to go today. So everybody, grab the brown book in your pew, because I want us to actually look at the text just for a second. Grab the brown book in your pew, page 44. Old Testament reading comes from the first and second chapters of the prophet Habakkuk. Now, as a pastor of this parish, I would like to ask that the next child born be named Habakkuk. <laughs> That's just a cool name, huh? How about some good old-fashioned Old Testament names? Maybe next year we could have a Habakkuk or a Zerubbabel or a Jehoshaphat. Amen. She's like, you're not naming my baby. Habakkuk. <laughs> Page 44, Habakkuk. Now look at the, the words first reading. Now glance off to the right. You'll see the italics. It says Habakkuk. You see all those numbers? What does that say? It says 1, colon, 2 to 3. That means we're going to read from chapter 1, verses 2 to 3. That's it. Just the first three 
verses of chapter 1. The chapter's longer than that, but what you're going to hear in, chapter, in verses 2 to 3 is going to capture the first chapter. Then you see the semicolon, and you see 2, and then you see 2 to 4. So we're going to have a little snapshot of chapter 1, then we're going to jump on over into chapter 2, and we're going to hear what happens there. So here's, here's the gist. Low point in Israel, the blessings that were promised to Israel are not very abundant or apparent, and Habakkuk is almost pleading on behalf of Israel on what happened to God. Why have you let us fall into ruin? Why are you doing this? He just, he just kind of lets God have it. Just, you're the great God, aren't you? You're supposed to be blessing us. You're supposed to be we're supposed to be your chosen people. And, and here we are, we're falling apart, we're in ruin, people are not being blessed by you. And he just kind of shares his heart with God. Now sometimes you have to do that. Now you have to make sure you listen, that's where people fail. But sometimes you just got to tell God what's on your heart. Like look at this, I'm just going to spin through the text super fast, look at it, he says, How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Whew! Sounds like my family at dinner right there. No, I'm just kidding. He's just, he's, he's looking at that guy and saying, why have you let this happen? And he goes on and on. He says, there's destruction and violence and clamorous discord. He says, why do you not intervene? That's basically the whole chapter. He's just pouring out his heart to God. He's asking God, why have you not answered our prayer? And then God answers in chapter 2. Let's look at God's answer. Then the Lord answered me and said, write down the vision clearly upon the tablet so that one can read it readily. Next page. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. God says to Habakkuk, hey, Habakkuk, the blessings are coming. The prayer has, is going to be answered. I have heard you. Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. Say that with me. Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. Say that with me one more time. Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. He's telling Habakkuk, hey, Habakkuk, I'm, I'm going to answer the prayer. I have heard your lament, but I'm going to give it to you how I want and when I want because I see everything. The season in my life, doesn't matter what church it was at, doesn't matter who was involved, just forget about all that, just know this. There's a season in my life as a priest where I came across something in the, in the church, in the parish, that was kind of hidden. It was in secret, and it wasn't supposed to be in secret. And I prayed about it, and I heard God say, hey, that needs to come to the light. I want that out the dark and in the light. So I prayed about it. I heard God say, I want you to do it. So I did it. I brought it into the light. And there was all kinds of drama because of what happened when I brought it into the light. Now, thank God that there's no drama at Christ the Redeemer. Amen? <laughs> Who's laughing over there? <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's not a lot of drama here. I like that. But I, there was lots of drama where I was, and I brought it into the light because he told me to do it, and I did what he said to do. All this drama, and it's all pointed at me all kind of mad, people are angry, they're accusing me of uh, all kinds of stuff. So I turned back to God and said, well, if this is what you do to your friends, there's no wonder you have so few of them. And God says, go to Habakkuk. And I said, and God bless you. I said, Hab Habba who? He says, go to Habakkuk. I'm like, um, is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? I'm not quite sure if I've heard of Habakkuk. So he says, go to Habakkuk. So I go to Habakkuk, I find him, he says, go to chapter 1. I read chapter 1. Then he says, go to chapter 2. I read chapter 2 and he says, stop. And he says, I want you to wait. 
And I didn't like what he said, because I like french fries and fried shrimp immediately. And I wanted to get out of this drama that was going on in my life. So I waited, because he said to wait, and then he said to me something that changed my life. He says, Mark, there's a difference between, between waiting with me or for me. See, if we're waiting for God to do something, we're waiting over here, there's something that you desperately want in your life, and God's not doing it, and you're just kind of waiting here, waiting for God to do something, you got nothing to do, there's, you can't eat the fried shrimp, you can't eat the french fries, they're going to be on the table, and you're just waiting. Like you beg for God to do something in your family, or in your spouse, or at work, or in your life, your parents' health, your finances, you're waiting for God, and when we're waiting for God to do something, nothing's happening in our picture. And God said, Mark, there's a difference between you waiting for me to do something versus waiting with me as I'm doing something. So I said, well, God, you're going to have to teach me how to do that. So he says, okay, I will. So then what happened is as I waited with God, praying for the parish, other things that were hidden came to the light. And when it all came to the light, there was all kind of drama going on. And then God, once he had it all in the light, then God said, now I need you to be a father. So I just began to talk to people and ask them, is this true? Is that true? Is that true? And what happened in the process, long story short, was a whole lot of reconciliation, a whole lot of honesty, a whole lot of repentance, and the parish was absolutely stronger after the incident than before the incident. Because I waited. You see, what was, what was God doing as I was waiting where he was, he was moving in other people's lives? He had other things to do. And I couldn't see that when I was waiting. So he said, wait for me, wait with me, and I will show you what I'm doing. That's what he's telling Habakkuk. Hey, Habakkuk, I need you to wait with me. The answer's going to come. It will not be late. It will press on to fulfillment. It will not disappoint. That's what he told Habakkuk. And Habakkuk had to learn how to wait with God. There's going to be moments in your life. There maybe have been moments in your life. Maybe you're there now. I don't know. But there will be moments in all of our journeys where you're going to ask God to do something. It will be bigger than you. And God may actually ask you to wait. When you wait, do not wait for God to do something. Wait with him as he does something. He came through for Israel in a way that was mightier than what they could ever expect. He came through for me and the parish in a way far beyond my imagination. And I promise you, eventually, he will come through for you if we learn how to not wait for him, but wait with him as he does what he wants to do in our lives. Amen? Amen. Let's all.